Right now, you're looking at a Russian tank that was destroyed during the war in Ukraine. Here's another one. And another one. And a few more. There's a lot more where these came from. If I were to show you pictures of every verified Russian tank destroyed during the past year, for just a few seconds each, that video would last longer than two hours. And every single individual tank shown in that video would have cost the Russian government somewhere between one and a half to four million US dollars each. That's somewhere between 175 to 475 times the average annual wage of a Russian worker for each destroyed tank. To say that this war is becoming very expensive for Russia would be an understatement. A massive economic drag on a nation already struggling with widespread poverty and a crumbling infrastructure. It's no secret that war is expensive, but for Russia, it does seem to be a lot more expensive than it is for most. And there's a few specific reasons for that. Reasons that go far beyond the natural realities of war. As we'll explore in this video, a large percentage of the losses Russia has suffered in Ukraine are not just the natural outcomes of a war strategy gone wrong, but are instead the direct consequences of someone in the Russian chain of command cutting corners in order to make a quick buck. In 2021, the year before it invaded Ukraine, the Russian military spent approximately 66 billion US dollars on its military budget, which is no small amount. By comparison, that same year, Ukraine spent less than 6 billion US dollars on its own military, or approximately just one eleventh of what was spent by their soon to be Russian opponents. By these numbers alone, any conflict between these two nations should have been a landslide. As we now know, this landslide never happened. What Russia didn't realize when it started its invasion was that its real enemy was not Ukraine selling out to the West, as Putin's propaganda had claimed. Instead, its real enemy was its own soldiers selling out their own comrades by sabotaging their own gear and sacrificing their entire strength as an operational force to steal their share of a few easy rubles from the Russian federal budget. A story so insane that it would almost be unbelievable if it weren't so easily verifiable and so commonplace throughout the entirety of recorded Russian history. <laughs> Take, for example, the late 1990s, when a deployed Russian general was caught red-handed, pun intended, selling Russian fuel on the black market to UN troops during the conflict in Kosovo, becoming one of the factors that ultimately forced Russia to withdraw from the area. Or take, for example, the Chechen war taking place around the same time, when it became commonplace for Russian soldiers ending their tour of duty to sell their rifles and grenades to the enemy and claim that they had lost them in combat, sealing the fate of their comrades who would deploy after them in exchange for some drinking money that would allow them to celebrate their own personal survival. Meanwhile, Russian officers observed the petty crime of their men and saw the true potential to operate at larger scale, turning themselves to sell weapons to the Chechens in bulk before their conscripts could completely saturate the market. These Russian officers sold the Chechens devastating weapons, knowing full well they would ultimately be turned against the men under their very own command. Because, you know, money. Tales like this should be hard to imagine coming from Russia a society whose foundation is supposed to be built on the ideal of valuing the good of the state in the collective whole more than the good of the individual. And yet, these tales are commonplace, a dime a dozen in Russian military history, where corrupt men at every step of the process have enriched themselves at the expense of their own nation, their own comrades, and their own war efforts. Russian soldiers apparently have a long-standing history of stealing everything from their own military gear to their own children's futures. And actually, the two go hand in hand. Because as more and more military gear is stolen, the future those soldiers are supposedly fighting for becomes increasingly out of reach, something that is very apparent in the particular case of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The sad part is, while they're in the process of destroying their own futures, corrupt Russian soldiers are also in the process of destroying the futures of others. Due to Russia's invasion, the National Bank of Ukraine currently estimates that the country is suffering from a massive 34% unemployment rate, 
This unemployment is crippling the country in a way that is perhaps only outdone by the war itself, and it will make it difficult for Ukrainians to recover and get back to normal life, even if the war ended today. With that in mind, before we dive further into today's episode, I wanted to briefly share how viewers of this YouTube channel can help. Today's episode was made possible by Fiverr, where you can find freelancers from all over the globe, including many highly skilled professionals from Ukraine who are ready and able to take on just about any job you can think of and who can produce very high quality work at an affordable price. If you have a business or side hustle or a time consuming personal project and you have more tasks to do than you can possibly handle yourself, you might consider a win-win situation by hiring an expert who is happy to help with the tasks that are keeping you up at night. Plus, Fiverr currently has a page where you can easily find and support Ukrainian freelancers, making it easy to provide them with vital income and job opportunities during these extremely difficult times. If you choose to sign up using the link in the description of this video, you'll also help support this channel and allow us to fund more videos like this one to help spread the facts about Russia's invasion of Ukraine even further. Back to our exploration of corruption in the Russian military. As could be expected, this corruption has taken an extreme toll on the Russian war effort in Ukraine, causing Russia to crumble in the face of what should have been a much weaker Ukrainian defense. The website Oryx has been tracking the destruction of military equipment throughout the war based on losses that can be visually confirmed. Based on this data, Russia has already lost more than 11,000 military vehicles, including more than half of their 3,400 total tanks nearly 1,000 armored fighting vehicles, and over 2,500 infantry fighting vehicles, just to name a few categories. In comparison, the Ukrainian military's equipment losses have been less than half of what has been suffered by the Russians in nearly every category. Many of these Russian losses can be attributed to poor strategy, which we've covered in other videos, but a large percentage can also probably be attributed to something else. Corruption. In fact, without corruption, the war in Ukraine may have been over within just a few months, or even just a few weeks, while it is now instead quickly approaching a length of at least a few years. Military corruption can come in many forms, from petty theft to sophisticated white-collar crime, but in the Russian military, they've mastered every stage. And for them, that is a big problem. Even a single small weakness, at a single small point, can cause a cascading domino effect that wipes out entire units and ultimately causes the entire military to suffer the results of lost objectives and weak points that the enemy can now exploit. And major weak points can be created by a single selfish conscript. In the movie 300, there was a hunchback that wanted to join the Spartan army. This hunchback was rejected by the Spartan king Leonidas, and then went on to get vengeance by betraying the Spartans in exchange for gold and women. But that's actually not the main point to be made here. Leonidas rejected the hunchback because that would have created a weak point that put the integrity of the entire Spartan shield wall at risk. A single weak spot and the phalanx shatters. Sparta needed to rely on every single soldier to hold his shield so that the enemy would have no single opportunity where they could break through. And while this movie is fictional, this makes a very real point. In the modern context, the results of a single failure can be much worse than a broken shield wall. For example, if a single soldier made the decision to sell off portions of Russian diesel on the black market, entire Russian units may then find themselves stalled and unable to move due to a lack of fuel that their supply books said they should have had plenty of, something we actually saw examples of during the invasion of Ukraine. <laughs> unable to reach their objectives as planned, their entire strategy, months in the making, could crumble and tens of thousands of Russian soldiers could be nullified, not by Ukrainian defenses, but by petty Russian theft. What gave a single soldier a few thousand extra dollars in their pocket could literally cause a domino effect that had the potential to cause Russia to lose the entire war. Similar results could come from soldiers stripping copper from military vehicles and selling it for pennies on the dollar or replacing new military-grade tires with cheap, worn-out knockoffs, and pocketing the difference, something which we now know is very commonplace in the Russian military. In countless instances in the Ukraine war, 
something that made a single Russian soldier just a few hundred dollars in petty profit ended up costing the Russian military an entire multi-million dollar vehicle, not to mention the lives of the soldiers inside and the strategic loss of the asset, which caused entire battles to go in the enemy's favor. Of course, military corruption is not by any means restricted to petty crime. The Russian defense minister, whose official salary only brings in $120,000 per year, is said to own an $18 million mansion. I'll let you fill in the gaps. And corrupt senior officials can set the stage for poor performance across the entire fighting force with just a few decisions. It could be as simple as promoting someone incompetent to a senior position in exchange for kickbacks, draining on the strategic capabilities of everyone underneath them who has to suffer the results of their decisions. Or it could come in the form of procurement contracts, which are given at inflated prices, or which allow for inferior quality gear in exchange for a kickback of the profits. At lower levels, Russian commanders may make the decision to see their soldiers as a labor force rather than a fighting force like the Russian commander who hired out his troops as slave labor and then pocketed the fees intended for their wages. He was fined a mere $1,200 and barred from command for just three years. This kind of slave labor treatment is apparently commonplace in Russia and is likely only prosecuted when the case is made public for some reason or another. And this virtually guarantees a lack of unit cohesion when Russian troops are forced to endure a real battle together knowing their commanders are willing to sell them as slave labor in times of peace, what might their commanders be willing to do to profit in times of war? Many a Russian soldier has figured he would be better off taking his chances by simply surrendering to Ukraine. Other Russian commanders may have other ways of extracting wealth from their units. Some have been known to take supplies designated for their troops and sell it off for cash. Others have been known to take money that was intended for training exercises, choosing to pocket it instead of giving their troops the training that they need. When the real battle comes, and they face a well-trained army, you can guess the results. We will probably never know exactly how much corruption harmed Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But what we do know is that Russia definitely shot itself in the foot. It will be a long time before Russia is considered the world's second most powerful military ever again. If you want to see more examples of Russian military corruption in action, and find out why Russian soldiers were sent into combat with wooden blocks instead of legitimate explosive charges, you should check out our other video on the topic. And don't forget to like and subscribe.